I'm so grateful and excited to welcome to the rug, our Magic Creative Mornings rug, E.J. Carr. Morning. Good morning. Um, wow. Um, <laughs> uh, now I know why, I'm a photo why I became a photographer, because I never wanted to do this. <laughs> uh, Brandy, thank you for inviting me to have sweaty palms. Um, uh, um, so, uh, I was invited maybe three weeks ago by Brandy to, uh, to speak, and this is, I've never, I, at this point in my life, I've spent a lot of time, I do spend a lot of time in reflection. Um, you know, I'm not 25 years old anymore, and it's a, it, you get to a point where you start looking back and go, what did I do? It doesn't matter, uh, does anybody care? Uh, and I was in, I've been in that spot, and this actually gave me an opportunity to dig deeper uh, personally with the whole concept of reflection. And um, trust me, I, it's like trying to put a talk together. Uh, I'd wake up in the middle of the night thinking, what am I going to say about reflection? <laughs> and I tried to connect it in some philosophical way that I thought would matter. And um, I finally decided that I, I'm just going to reflect back on my career and the imagery that I've connected, uh, created, and it came to me that there's probably a connection with the work that I did back then to the work that I've been doing either recently or, you know, most recently. And I started going back through my um, through my archive, and I, my archive is extensive, and I, I certainly couldn't use examples from the whole thing, but I did come to a place where. I found some imagery that I thought was that they reflected images from before to images now that just by putting them next to each other, there was a reflection in the, in the image. Um, and so, th I'm, you know, that's what I'll be showing you and that's what I'll be sharing with you. Um, but before we do that, um, get forward, wait, there, oh, back. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to read the blog entry that was up there before I started speaking. It's a blog entry that I wrote about 10 years ago about my first experience as a photographer's assistant, an intern. I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I went to an art school there. And um, in order to graduate from art school, I had to take a photography class as an elective. And it was the last thing I ever wanted to do. Um, I grew up with an uncle who was a photographer, and he would take me to weddings on weekends to carry his bags, and it was just like, to me, that wasn't what I wanted to do. And uh, so, my, so I, I wish I could have, I, I can't show you the, the, uh, the blog entry, but um, I worked for a photographer then as an intern, and these are some of the first images that I created, and this was 1968. It was the summer of love, if you can't tell. Uh, <laughs> um, and that experience working in that studio with this photographer whose name was Ed. Oh, by the way, my name's EJ. That stands for Edward James. A lot of people ask me that. Um, so in the photographer who I worked with, his name was EJ, just coincidentally. Um, I, you know, the first time I went there, I knocked on the door, it was a weekday night, and in 1968 I could smell the marijuana <laughs> coming out from under the door. I could hear the music. And um, I, I go into the studio and there's all these beautiful models from New York City, and they're getting body painted, and the music is blasting. And um, I, I was just totally overwhelmed. I was just taken by that whole scene. And I went, oh, geez, this is what I want to do. It's like, <laughs> it's like I can be the cool guy and get the girls. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that was sort of the beginning for me. Um, so these images here were made very, very early on, within weeks of that first experience of being in that environment. Um, and well, but, but before I did this, um, I, was a, I was in art school and I was painting. And I, I was like, I wasn't sure where I was going to go, but like I said, I took this elective class and I ended up moving towards photography. But just as a side note, uh, the two paintings on the edge, on either side, 
Um, they're at the Goodwill in uh, Glendale. <laughs> if you're interested, I, they might still be there. <laughs> I moved them around for like 40 years, and I finally decided that the only one that I really wanted to keep was the one in the center. Um, so if you go by, it might still be there. <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, let's. Oh, and that was me back then. And this is me now. That, that was my first selfie ever. <laughs> so, um, I think I have about 20 slides to share. Uh, but, so I, just, I chose imagery that just visually reflected. And I, I did my best. Sometimes some people may not get it, but I, I got this all, all along the way. So this image over here, uh, was made about 1980 on the left. And this picture here was made during the pandemic. Um, and just visually, they, uh, you know, the hands, the eyes, the whole, just the, the lighting, uh, to me, that was a reflection. To me, that was a reflection. Uh, by the way, if there's any questions as we go, we don't have to wait to the end. I'm most certainly open to take them now. Um, oops. Again, um, 1976, 2020. Uh, I, I've just discovered that I have a theme that goes through what I do. Um, I, I seem to have a fascination with hands. We'll see that as we go through this. Um, So my, my early influences, if you're familiar, some of you maybe were with uh, three photographers, uh, a photographer named Bert Stern, Richard Avedon, and Irving Penn. Um, a lot of people today, students who I teach, I'm an adjunct at ACC, I teach a few classes, they have no idea who those people are. So it's sort of fun to expose them to that. But that image on the left is very, very powerful, like just a inspiration from Bert Stern. Um, again, 1980-2022, uh, just the fact that the, the motion, the angles, to me, were just reflective. Um, again, I said hands. That's my father on the left, um, Edward Joseph Carr, and I'm Edward James Carr. So. Uh, Interesting, when I became, when I went to New York City, um, my father started sending me letters and he would sign him E.J. Carr. He was never E.J. Carr until I became E.J. Carr. <laughs> <laughs> um, those, that's an image there, those are uh, Richie Havens, the, uh, the, the musician from a photo shoot um, that I did with him in New York City. Richie Havens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Richie Havens. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, to me, there's a reflection there. This, that's uh, Philip Johnson on the left there, American architect, and that's uh, his name is Martin Semple. He's an, he's a, a lawyer in Denver. Um, I did, I did a photo shoot with him for a project for History Colorado on the Irish nationals that live in, live in Colorado. Um, but again, technically, visually, to me, there's a reflection there. Oops, where we go? Um, that's pretty clear. <laughs> this, was shot, this was shot of a fisherman in Ireland. I, I'll, I'll share a little bit about that at the end here. I lived in Ireland for three years. Uh, and this man is um, David Kazaz. He was an Iranian Jew uh, psychologist in Denver that I met. Um, and again, going through my archive is just like, wow, I did that before. I did it again. Oh, oh and here's the Cinderella story. That's before and after. Again, reflections. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't hear. Oh, 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 sorry. Um, 
The one on the left was done about um, 1992, 1993, and the one on the right was done about a year ago for a fashion editorial story I was working on. Uh, again, this was done 1980 in New York City with Jeffrey being the fashion designer. And this was done in Denver three years ago with uh, fashion designer Steve Sells in Denver. Uh, again, just reflections for me. This was done with a fashion designer in New York in uh, 1984. And this was done in for a designer two years ago in Denver. This one's phenomenal to me. I, um, this was done in, again, New York City for an editorial story for a fashion magazine on the left. Uh, and this was done with a fashion designer named Mona Lucero in Denver, uh, meant to break the paradigm of women in scarves and using a male for the photo shoot. But the, this, the, I can't help but say that that reflects each other. And, and this is all about color for me just the fact that the colors are so powerful. Uh, again, this was done in 1976 in Dallas, Texas is where I started shooting. And this was done on, actually on South Santa Fe Drive. <laughs> and this photograph on the left, again, was done about 1976. But this was one of the images that when I saw the image, I thought, wow, I can do this. You know, this, this really it sort of pumped up myself, my self-esteem uh, early on. And then the one on the right there was done three years ago in Denver with a fashion designer named uh, Brooks Luby for an editorial story. Uh, okay. So... A words of wisdom. Brandy asked me to ask to share some words of wisdom, and um, through this process, I spent a lot of time thinking about how I approached my career, and I put a lot of things in the forefront for me in my life in this process of working as a photographer. And uh, the things that be, the things that were important to me for all that time before I started getting a little older, was getting fame, uh, getting accepted. Um, and, I, and it's not that I didn't keep my family and my friends in my picture, but those things were the most important things to me. And I've come to this place where I've decided, well, I've decided, I've, 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 I see that to me at this point, what really matters is my life and my, my freedom, my self-integrity, and how I create. And for so long, I created because I needed to be accepted. If, if, if somebody liked it, then I, had, I felt better about myself. Well, I, I've grown past that. And I've come to that through this, through this reflection. Um, and thank you for that, for the opportunity to do that. Because it was scary to dig deep, but there was no option for me at this point. I had to go there. Uh, so the reason I put these two pieces up here, um, like I had mentioned, I think, I said I lived in Ireland for three years to take a time off from the, uh, the race just to live. And I started creating imagery and stories there that were just for me, not for anybody else. And I can't show them all because they're pretty extensive, but I've put the links up there. So if you're interested, you can copy them and you can see the actual flushed out total project. Uh, the image on the left, um, is the lead image I had illustrated my version of the Arthurian legend when I was living in Ireland. Um, it just came to me, and it's an extensive project, but it was done from the heart. It didn't, I wasn't doing it for anybody but me. And through that, the second project came to be because somebody there had seen the first project, uh, a fashion designer in, in Dublin, Ireland. And both projects are beautiful. The links are there. If you choose to look them, you can copy them. Off of, the, off of there at some point before we're done today. Or share it, you can share it, yeah. Um, and so I think I have two more images. So that's my favorite image. <laughs> and it sort of reflects where I am. Um, you know, it's, I haven't given up and I'm still working.
but there's time now where I just want to sit on the back of a truck and think about it. And um, that was actually done for 5280 Magazine. Uh, the, the, I think they used to do a project called the Faces of Denver, and uh, I was working on that project for the magazine. And those dogs were blood donors, which I'd never heard of. I didn't know there were such things as blood donors. Um, and th that's my words of wisdom. Um, and I got that, I think I came to that by living in a country like Ireland, where people work to live. They don't live to work. And I, I practice this more now than ever. I really spend time just in quiet, letting it come to me, rather than rush, 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 do, do, do. I spend more time being, so thank you, thank you.